Hello and welcome to The Forest, a survival game where you can start your own lumberjack business, create a cosy snuggle chamber for the boys, and make friends with the locals. The boys and I start our adventure on a budget airline with a frankly underwhelming selection of in-flight movies. I mean, would it be so much to ask for Alvin and the Chipmunks 2, the squeak hall, to be among the options? After a spot of minor turbulence, the plane starts to crash, which is not the best start to a bro's holiday I've ever had. I make sure to hold onto my coffee like a champ though, because I paid way too much for this milk chocolate caramel latte for it to spill onto the floor. Once the plane has landed, Prince Andrew and Redface arrives and takes a small unconscious boy away. What a hero, saving a child from being scolded by all the spilled cappuccinos on the floor. Sprog is not so fortunate however, crawling around in the coffee like a fucking drama queen. Just stand up mate, you're embarrassing yourself. Jesus Christ. Hey Spruce! Hey buddy! Hey! hey! What's up? <laughs> uh, there's a there's, no. There's a I can't. I, you're blocking me. On the way out of the wreckage, we find the air hostess taking a nap. Like, excuse me, I ordered a strawberry panna cotta two hours ago, and you've just been sleeping on the job. I will be leaving a strongly worded review about your service, young lady. So I'm gonna assume this game's a horror, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Nova and Sporky emerge from the plane bathroom, no doubt trying to join the notorious Mile Low Club, and finally the gang is all together. Ready to start our new life out in the countryside. As someone who's lived in London for most of my life, it's really refreshing to finally be among nature, free from the smell of urine and pollution. I mean, sure, I'm covered in blood and have nothing to eat, but it's a small price to pay for the great outdoors. Naturally, the first thing that we decide to do in this peaceful, idyllic new environment is to destroy the fragile ecosystem with a program of systematic deforestation. Because as everybody knows, the worst part about the forest is that pesky forest. I mean, imagine how much space we'll have to frolic around in being bros once all these trees are gone. Unfortunately, my woodcutting skill is a bit lacklustre, and I end up dropping 100 kilograms of tree onto Spork's dense skull, which I don't think he really appreciated. Wait, wait. Timber! Ah, that fucking hit me in the head! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what he's getting upset about, really. There's nothing I like more than a little bit of casual brain damage with the lads. Oh, look at this log! Hey, oh, look at my log! Whoa! <laughs> I then demonstrate my immense strength by effortlessly picking up a heavy log and show Spock that I really can handle my wood. He didn't actually say it, but I think he was impressed and a little bit turned on by my raw masculinity. Right, what do wow. we do? Fire, we can have fire. Being the Neanderthals that we are, we decide that building a fire should be something that we start working towards. Imagine how much easier it will be to clear the forest once half the wildlife has died a gruesome, fiery death. I've got a rock. I've got a rock. Oh, uh, I love a rock. That's a oh, lovely yeah. country. We learn that Spruce has been playing this game without us, despite us all agreeing that we would all boot up the game for the first time together. What a little snake. Uh, has anybody nah. actually played this game before? Do we actually know what we're doing? I've never I've played been, it. I've played this <laughs> game for the past 12 hours. <laughs> what? Why? Because uh, I have nothing better to do with my time. What the fuck? So... Instead of playing this all together for the first time. He knows exactly what to do. <laughs> <laughs> to try and boost morale after this heartbreaking news, Sprog finds a tennis ball and we play a game of fetch, just like my dad used to do with me. However, when I turn around, Sprog is still standing there like an alpha and hasn't run away leaving me abandoned in a park. I was confused by this, as I thought that was a key part of go find the ball in the long grass, son. Weird. Spruce and I go back to the plane to check up on Sleeping Beauty who, surprise surprise, still hasn't fetched me my strawberry panna cotta. Disgraceful service. Sprog takes this news well and taps the hostess lightly with his sharpened axe. Gosh, she's... Bowabunga! Well, if Why she wasn't dead you? before, she definitely is now. Oh my god, you actually... Because the sun is shining through the now thinned forest, we heroically decide to take those thick clothes off of her and put them on ourselves. Heatstroke is no joke, guys. Stay safe. What the fuck is wrong with us? After giving the air hostess a well-earned massage, Sprog shows off his telekinesis powers, lifting several logs into the air without a care in the world. No one likes to show off, Sprog. Stay humble. Oh my god, look at this! Who's building this? I'm building this. Yeah! yeah. The beautiful silence of the forest was then abruptly ended by Sporky, who started... Zombies! Yeah. Zombies! Fuck! Ah, kill it! Attack. What? Where? Ah, Where? Kill it! Oh fuck! 
After this gang of well-dressed Mexicans had destroyed the pesky zombie, we came to an embarrassing realization. That's a human. <laughs> we just obliterated. Oh my God. <laughs> you, you, I've got his body. I've got his body. Take it. Put it down. I want some food too. After this socially awkward oopsie, we cut off his big bald head to use as a football. Sorry, big chief, but look at the bright side. You won't have to pay any more money for head polish. Wow. I should really start up my own financial advice service. Spruce holds the cheeky bugger's head like it was a 14 year old girl and he was Michael Jackson. What a caring fellow. We are starting to get a little bit peckish because those logs don't carry themselves and, honestly, we're a little bit out of shape. Since we haven't been able to set up our own vegetable garden yet, and we have a fresh source of protein slung over Nova's shoulder, we decide to cook and eat the camp invader's limbs. Wow, we've been on this island for less than a day and we've already become cannibals. That's dark. Anyway. There's no time to dwell on the inherent evil bubbling up from within our souls caused by the heinous crimes against humanity that we've just committed because we have this cute little log cabin that he's building. Nothing says bros quite like building a dream house together and spooning on the floor like a group of newly born puppies. After Nova destroyed our campfire, and thus our only form of light, we decide to build a gigantic fire. The hope here is that any potential threat see the huge pillar of flames and are scared away by just how manly and impressive we all are. Plus, you have to admit, it really improves the feng shui of this cozy little forest clearing. Using his impressively large brain, Spork creates a fire stick, which is truly an imposing weapon, but is inversely proportionate to the size of his frankly underwhelming penis. Nova gets jealous of his wood and... What a horrific show of violence, but I've got to respect her energy. Such a Taurus. Being the hungry boy that I am, I tried to butcher his corpse for sustenance, but unfortunately the big lad makes a deal with Satan himself and resurrects on the plane. As happy as I am to see the boy again, I am kind of upset that I'll have a rumbly tummy for a while longer. My prayers are soon answered, however, as the gigantic light source in an otherwise pitch black forest miraculously lures other cannibals to our humble abode. This is fantastic news for us, as it finally means we can begin to fill our stomachs with tasty leg stew. In the chaos, however, Nova the Destroyer once again ruins our chance of toasted marshmallows as she breaks our lovely campfire. God damn, Nova. Guess we'll all have to snuggle together for warmth. What a shame. With our brand new fire set up, we start to cook the rewards of our hunting, but I get confused with the controls and accidentally break the fire using a human head. Sorry boys, I'm blonde, I need extra processing time sometimes. Finally, Spruce collects the final logs needed to build our cabin and god damn, doesn't it just look adorable? I can't wait to get in there and have platonic relations with the lads. Of course, we don't currently have a way of getting up to the cabin without climbing up. And I have the upper body strength of an undernourished hamster, but hey, it's fine. We construct a rope up to the top, and after a long, productive day, the boys can finally get some socially distant shut-eye. I'm so proud of these cheeky lads. We started off the day by surviving a horrific plane crash and ended together in an adorable little cabin that we built by ourselves, feeling full up with the delicious flesh of the local book club. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe with notifications on so you are updated when part two of this video comes out. We recorded for over 10 hours total, so there's plenty more to come from these humble boys trying to find their way in this crazy old world. Make sure to like the video and comment, Greg is one thick boy, because that will really help improve my fragile self-esteem. Stay safe, boys.